my whole life is music. Whatever it is, it's music. I've produced hundreds of albums for artists. I've written hundreds of orchestrations. My father early on taught me that whatever gift I've been given, I should burnish it and shine it and make it as good as I could make it and then give it back to the one from whom I received it. It might just be that I was raised in a strong Christian home. Christian influences have been everywhere. Church has been an important part of my life. The Christian way has always been something that's been part of who I am. My little songs, for example, the Pass It On to them, it's been so much fun to, through the years, it's been used at countless camps, like around here, and at funerals and ordination services. I remember uh, seeing 100,000 people in the Cotton Bowl singing. They all had candles. And I was all by myself in Cincinnati, Ohio, in lying in bed, and I had, this was before color television, and I turned on the funny little television set and I happened to see them sing my tune to the Cotton Bowl. Well, I'll always remember that. But the feeling that comes to me, being able to write something that's so universally accepted, isn't that amazing what can happen if you allow God to use your gifts? And that's back to the thing my dad talked to me about years and years earlier. It's funny, you know, in the Christian marketplace, if you write one or two things that people happen to know and sing a lot, uh, there's a sense in which your reputation, I suppose, is made, I don't know. But I've written lots and lots of things. But the only things that people remember me for are, oh, how he loves you and me and pass it on. And those are just little tiny things, you see. But I've written all kinds of stuff. You know that? I think it's my thing. I am so fulfilled because I've worked with so many great people. Also, I have always loved accompanying. I much prefer that to playing solo piano. Uh, let's pick it up uh, here. Yeah. Three. Sun and clouds and... I'm oh, sorry, once again. And sun and clouds are clear and bright. For example, this week at this Creativity Week, we've had Jack Coleman here. Now, I've, I've really respected Jack for many years. He's a good singer and he's a good teacher. But to have him here at this setting, that's so much fun for me. And that's true of a lot of people. It all has to do with relations, relationships, friendships, respect. That's what art is. It's all relations. It's always been music. It's always been the arts. And if it weren't for that, I'd probably be pumping gas or something, which is fine. But it's always music. I just did what I did, and it was a natural course of events. I remember very well when I was a little kid, four years old, I was sitting on the floor in the dining room of our house in Chicago, and my mother was working one of those treadle sw sewing machine things. And uh, I got up off the floor and I went over to the piano and I started to play. I have no idea what I played. And then after I played, I went back and <laughs> sat down and played on the floor again. I remember that very, very well. I don't remember anything else about it, or if I did that every day, but it was fun. 
And then of course, when the piano lessons began, then it got serious pretty quickly. Especially my dad. See, I'm German, and discipline was a very important part of our, our growing up days. And uh, so I had to practice a lot. And a lot of times he would sit next to me. He knew just enough about it to really drive me crazy, you know. But I practiced, and if I didn't know it, he would puff. You, know, you should learn this kind of stuff. And I did. I worked at it. And it's like something I should always do, you know, or I had always done. I love it most of all, by the way, when I can play softly. It gives tones a chance to sing, you know. I hope that you think to yourself that that was a really satisfying experience to hear me play. Isn't that amazing what can happen if you'll allow God to use your gifts? <laughs>